Tesla has been frequently and significantly modifying the ability to get the access tokens that enable the use of their unofficial APIs. And overall, that's a good thing because it increases the overall product security, but it's still you know, annoying for people like me who have their own homegrown apps. <clears throat> and um, you, know, you could use um, apps like um, the Auth app for Tesla, the iOS app, which um, uses a, a more future-proof method um, to get these tokens because it emulates using a web browser through, through the mobile app, the iOS mobile app. Um, I don't know if Android has one like that. It probably does. Um, and there's this gentleman out there, his name's Tim. <clears throat> He's figured out a way to do something similar uh, through headless Python. And this video will show you how to get that working. Um, and though fully automating this um, will be more difficult now, uh, this at least gets you the access token and now more, probably more importantly, the refresh tokens that uh, you can actually use in a headless automated fashion, um, the refresh tokens. And the access tokens, they previously lasted for 45 days, so automation wasn't as critical, but now they only last eight hours. So the refresh token uh, was becoming more important because you can use that in an automated headless way um, every eight hours. And so first you want to make sure you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi. Make sure that the system is updated and, and upgraded, ready to go, which I did this earlier. So the first thing you got to do is you have to get pip installed if you don't have that. So the command to get pip for Python 3 Get that installed. Okay, and if you go to Tim's page here, um, has a lot of details on how this implementation works. Go to the very bottom. You can use the simple way to install this. And that's it. That's, uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, we'll run a quick test and there's some examples that he gives up here so I'll show you that real quick so we'll just copy this example and um, we'll make a uh, test Python here and let's see here <clears throat> I don't actually want to actuate the trunk and I'll just get the vehicle state so don't worry if you don't know this, this just happens. This is something I know. Okay, so I'm going to run this now. And what you're going to do is it'll say, use your browser um, from your whatever desktop you're using. It doesn't have to be on the device, which is nice if you use this headless. And then when you're done at the very end, you'll actually get a page not found. And that's the URL you'll paste back in. So this is the one you use to authenticate. So you copy and paste that into your browser. Okay, and obviously I'm not Elon, so I'm gonna change that. Now I happen to have multi-factor authentication. You may not, but uh, if you do, this will be the flow you follow. Like they said, you get a page not found. This is the URL you copy and you paste it in here. And that's it. This is my car, FM2187. Car version, whether the doors are open or not. So this is uh, the odometer, so it works. And it saves the, you can read the details, but this, it saves the tokens in this cache.json. So you can use that later if you want. 
and that's that's quite simple. And you know, again, hats off to Tim for getting this to work again um, and making it future proof. Future proof. This is this is using a similar browser um, method, um, which uh, really uh, previously you had to dig through the HTML um, and then strip out attributes that pass through a series of HTTP request calls. It was really cumbersome. So rely on this browser interaction. Uh, it bypasses a lot of the headaches in previous methods, uh, things that had shown up before like capture, recapture, uh, even things like multi-factor authentication, they're handled by the browser method. And so if they add new stuff or change stuff, you know, Tesla does that, there's really little need to change the code because you're relying on the browser, which calls out, you know, to the native uh, Tesla, you know, uh, uh, Tesla website to do that. So um, you could still, like I said, you could still fully automate this with something like Selenium. Um, and, uh, you know, but using the refresh token really makes that unnecessary, uh, in my opinion. And of course, you know, if you want to tweak with the more, you can re clone Tim's repository and then customize it further. But that's it for now. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions. If you found this video useful, feel free to like and subscribe or use my referral code I linked in the description below. Thanks. Have a good day.